Hey folks, before we start the show, our last episode was recorded before the untimely death of Daphne Younger. Um, unfortunately, she posted a video saying that she's going to take her life, and she carried that out. Um, we will talk about that in detail, but right now, we're going to give a 10-bell salute before we start. And welcome to our latest edition of the Grumpy Old Man Wrestling Podcast. Rick Crab here with a mixed emotional Christopher Phil Chris Philato. Yeah. The loose cannon, the cult of multiple personalities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, um, so yeah, we started the show with a salute to Daphne Younger. Um I know I know Chris, you've been chomping at the bit to talk about this, so go ahead. Well, uh, not to go into too much detail, I did see portions of the video that got leaked onto YouTube, and she did talk about CTE a lot. Yeah. Um, this makes me think about Benoit a lot. Right. So hopefully this is not another case about Benoit. It, mm. Instead of what happened to the family, you know? Yeah, and I've read, and I'm sure you have to, so many comments from so many different wrestlers. Oh my Everybody God, it came out of woodwork. And just about every promotion, except I, I could have missed it. I didn't see WWE post anything. Uh, WWE posted their website and their Twitter. Okay, all right. Okay, good. Because I did. They were like the only one I didn't see because I saw NWA did it, AEW did it, Impact, Impact did, did it. Impact did it before the show first, you know. Right. So, I mean. And I think Ring of Honor did it um, last weekend. Right. And, yeah, I mean, it's a shame. And I think a lot of it, too, was just that, I don't know, I saw a tweet earlier. Well, Shortly before we recorded this episode, a few hours ago, saw one from Francine from ECW. She based she said something that's like that basically said the poor girl was lonely. It's like her most of her posts get maybe twenty people to respond it. This video had twelve hundred people, so you know, she just wanted to be loved. That was her Yeah, that's point. true. Um Well I'm gonna leave it with this. Um and we'll talk about the, tri the little tributes we saw on, mm -hmm. on all out that I saw last night. Yeah. If you feel depressed, which I was like two years ago, full disclosure, and you have those thoughts, find someone to help. There's uh, suicide hotlines out there. There are counselors out there. There are grief counselors out there. There are counselors for everything out there. And if you look hard enough, you probably if you're if you're of low income, you could probably find something um, something within your price range or even free, and someone to talk to, or just lean on a friend. I mm. mean, you're not alone. You're mm. not alone at all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we can't stress that enough. So. Yeah. All right. Well, with that unfortunate news happening recently, we also had some good news. We have a lot of good things to talk about regarding AEW, especially with. The last co the go home shows for Dynamite and Ramp Rampage, and then going into All In itself. I'm um, excuse me, All Out itself. All right, All Out as a pay per view beat up Vince for lunch money and shook him upside down for change. They did, and one thing 
And you might actually have a heart attack when I say this. They did one thing on dynamite that amazed me. I'm actually, and this will probably amaze you when I say this. I'm actually going to say something positive about Orange Cassidy. Okay, I can't wait to hear this. One thing they did that I thought was absolutely brilliant. Now, his match, as well as, you know, I think one or two others that night, and every, every episode of Dynamite and Rampage has this. I mean, Christ, Rampage did it for a CM Punk promo. Yeah. Usually, they tell you, all right, fans, we're going to go to picture in picture. You're going to love it. And most people are like, okay, you watch those matches. And nobody's going to get pinned or submitted during that. Not this past Rampage with Mr. Cassidy. He wound up winning, and they actually went back to it, which I thought was brilliant. And I had heard later that they had said that they were this was done on purpose to get people, basically get people to watch the commercials. Well, what I heard, if you had the Fight app and you watched it on Fight, if it goes to picture in picture on TNT, you still get play-by-play. Play, it's a full picture. True. Which is also brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's a brilliant move. I don't know who made it. Do you think Tony Khan made the call or whatever TNT made the call? Uh, probably. Mutual? Probably. I'd say it was mutual. In fact, on that episode, um, Omega alluded to a meeting that they had earlier. He, he kind of worked real life into, you know, basically like a work suit. So that's probably one of the things they were talking about. So, yeah, that's... It wouldn't surprise me if both of those parties, or even maybe some of their sponsors might have also come in on a conference call, maybe. <laughs> maybe Tom would have been better. How would you like to have been a fly on Vince's office wall during the pay-per-view? No, you thanks. know, because you know he would have wa he watched it. I would say no thanks that day or any day before or after now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> after seeing Punk thing and before all because from what I heard, Vince. Well, that was another thing I heard during the Raw tapings. He was very upset. He, he ripped the scripts from her several times. Now, I mean, if I was a fly on the wall, I'd be afraid of him throwing a book or a shoe or something at me and squashing me against that wall. That's so that's your answer. There. I read this recently. For the upcoming Raw, they had an emergency talent meeting with creative because they're circling the wagons right now. Yeah. Because how are they going to respond to the pay-per-view? Uh, with more re rematches? That seems like all they... Know how to do right now. They're spinning in wheels. They are. They're spinning in wheels, and that is going to lose asses and seats mm -hmm. and viewers. Their their numbers have significantly gone down, and with football coming up, they're going to go down further. Oh yeah. Well, another thing AEW is doing, and I kind of have mixed feelings about this. I want to ask you about it. The ending of Dynamite, where they brought down the cage. And yeah. It, it reminded me of, of a lot of old NWA mm -hmm. uh, when they always ended the show with a cliffhanger. Yeah, okay, that I understood. And I was thinking of that. I was thinking also, too, of Reign of Terror with Triple H. Oh, yeah. You have the vice presidents booking themselves out and just making everything just bleak without any hope of, you know, squashing any hopes of the. A, they. Omega and the Young Bucks have been doing that a lot, and it's kind of reminded me a lot of basically the NWO, where they would just keep squashing without getting any kind of come up. Yeah, well, they're the, the new version of the NWO or DX. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, as I said, I had mixed feelings about it because I thought that was kind of that was kind of a cool way to go if, if, if they came back with some kind of payoff for the good guys, and we will talk about that later. Oh, God. I saw the pay-per-view. It was excellent. It, yeah. It was, I popped for every little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Britt Baker doing the Panama Sunrise Pile Driver. Which actually I heard somebody, either Simon Miller or WrestleTalk, call the Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. Excalibur or Ross called it that way. You know, I called it at the pay-per-view. Mm, uh, but... Uh, that was a foreboding of what's going to come later in the pay-per-view. Right. Okay. Oh, that, um, that was icing on the cake at the end. Right. Of a nice cake. But you know I want to talk about who debuted at the pay-per-view as much as I want to. C. 
Sting, gosh, who didn't debut at that pay-per-view? But yeah, I know, well, okay, we'll get into that. I think this is where I think you're going with, you had the Kojima and the Moxley match. Oh, yeah. They had a nice little blow-up on Rampage about that. That was kind of cool. Kojima is apparently a comedy wrestler in Japan, and I watch his matches in Japan. I don't think he's much of a comedy wrestler. Maybe earlier in his career, or maybe more recently. Yeah. But, but <laughs> well, we saw, well, right after that match, well, well I don't know. We'll, we'll get to the pay per view. We'll, we'll talk about it then. Is there anything else you want to get to before we do that? Yeah, fuck you, Vince. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's another reason I'll say fuck you, Vince. Our last episode, folks, the reason why it took so goddamn long is because I posted 10 seconds of a, an episode of Raw that has more relevance to it now than it did 10 years ago. And because of that, the, and even when I posted on YouTube, they had said no restrictions. And then, when I go to post it, copyright restrictions, and then they said, because of WWE, so I had to trend that segment Which now. is bullshit. Which yep. is complete and utter bullshit. They can, Vince can kiss my ass. Vince can kiss my ass, and YouTube, you know what, fuck you too. Okay, and you're not monetizing me for any of my stuff. Well, I get a lot of YouTube, you're a bunch of spineless assholes, so. Yeah, and this might be our last episode because of that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Welcome to Freedom of Speech. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there anything in SmackDown you really want to talk about? Or? I watched it inebriated, so I can't remember much. I remember there was a title match with Finn Balor and Roman, and that yeah. didn't, that really didn't happen because it, it, Roman won. That's all you need to know. Roman won. I forgot who. Oh won. well, yeah. He won. There was one supposed thing that we're supposed to give a shit about, but. Oh, oh, is that the Heyman thing? No, 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 no. That was funny, actually. But, um, no, both what I mean with the Heyman thing is he actually got a call from Brock Lesnar and had his music on his ringtone. But no. Why, why was being interviewed with Caleb Braxton? <laughs> yeah. But, no, what I was going to allude to is after Roman had won his match, he looked to the video, and it seems like that's a trend with Roman Reigns. After he wins a match, he sees a little surprise on the video or somebody coming out. You, you hear see all these red lights, you hear a heartbeat, and then you see the demon. Oh, uh, well, I did not roll. Like I said, I was a little drinky-drinky that night. Well, that was at the very end. Okay. And here's the thing with that. It's like, I never bought that character for this reason. It's like, all right, you put on some face paint, all of a sudden... You're you go, a badass. You, yeah, you go from, you know, skinny, diver body, Finn Balor, to all of a sudden you're a demon. Okay. I mean... Granted, all right, a lot of people kind of did that with Bray Wyatt, but without the demon makeup, Bray Wyatt, I would not want to meet in a alley. He, he, I mean, he basically looks like he looks like Chuck Mosley from Faith No More if he did like a bunch of acid and just went on a violent streak. Okay, but I don't know. Um, Balor, I never really bought him as you know. It seems like every by he's ever fought, he he was like outweighed by a hundred pounds. So I don't know. Yeah, well. You gotta remember, uh, and I'm, he's probably going to be going to cut list for Vince. You know, remember, nobody over 30, nobody under, uh, no midgets. Yeah. I, st I saw NXT, previous episode of NXT, and I've noticed subtle changes. I've heard piped in crowd noise. Yeah. Like, big arena crowd noise in a small building. Right. I saw the new logo. You've <laughs> seen the new logo. We both don't like the new logo. The new logo looks like a laundry mistake, and it looks like a, a, look like a five-year-old. Uh, looks like a five-year-old drew on it. Uh, but uh, from what I'm hearing, Bruce and Vince are the producers. They're still letting Hunter run things, but under their stru close scrutiny. Uh, and Bruce Pritchard is. Uh, I saw a recent interview with Cornette talking about them. He basically he spoke about Bruce Pritchard and. Johnny Ace, Tom Lar you know, Tom Laronitis. And he basically said when they went to OVW, it's like, they don't know how to evaluate talent. The only thing they know how to do is pick somebody that they think Vince will like and not scream at them about. Big man. We must find Big Ben. Yeah. Big man that makes, or somebody that makes Vince fun, you know, laugh. Oh, like Riddle? Yeah. Yeah. He likes Riddle because of the just pot humor. And I bet you Vince does pot. He, there's a story that flew around that Spike Dudley said, said Vince came up to him uh, and asked him for weed. 
he does something or he should start doing something. I well, know. I remember an old Playboy interview back early 90s. Um, Vince said he has... Um, he, he, uh, he's dyslexic. Yeah. And he probably has ADHD. Which that, that's evident what you oh, see. God. You know, that's very evident what you see. That explains a lot of things. And probably yeah. bipolar, too. Uh. That explains all the schizophrenia we've been seeing on all three shows. Now all three shows. It used to be two shows. Right. And the big changes are going to be coming in effect on the September 14th NXT show when it goes live. Because we've been watching tape shows. <laughs> and I don't know. Vince is probably slob slobbering to get uh, Raquel Gonzalez to the main roster. <laughs> Because she, she's she's perfect. She 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 she'll be the new China. Mm. I was like, well, I don't think he liked the old China because of, of his daughter. Oh yeah, but fuck you, Vince. After a lot of people, saw, I got a lot of texts after the pay per view mm -hmm. that said Vince is dead to me. Right after that pay per view mm. because they turned into AEW fans. Wow. I wouldn't go that far, but I... The momentum is on your side Yeah, right now. it is. I agree. But I, know, I had heard some interesting comments about that, though. But we'll get into that when we get to the paper. Yeah. All right. So, all out. Oh! In, in Chicago. Fucking God. All right. The pre-show started off with the Hardy Family Office, all five members of the Hardy Family Office, against the best friends in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Be, your, your, your favorite pockets was in it. Yeah. Average match. It was a good match. For, for a pre yeah, show, for a pre show. Yeah, yeah that's not too match. bad. Uh, and not like, not like Vince who puts like a, supposedly their second most important title or tag, women's tag team titles or something. Pockets kept on trying to do the fake kicks on uh, Private Party. Yeah, whatever. They hit all their spots. They hit yeah. all their spots. And that was a good match. Then to the main show, which this is, I think this match to me was a downer. It was the only downer. It was Miro Casey. Yeah, well, I guess they were, they were trying to save up for the other stuff. Yeah. And by the way, it's a toss-up between that callous, you know, late kicking shirt that he had and Eddie Kingston shirt for rest and teaser of the year. I might order that after we... <laughs> Redeem these nuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, lot of Tweeted after the paper review says, I, I, "Yeah, I'm redeeming his right now." <laughs> oh, well, and I'm sure Miro felt like it was day that day. Yeah, he's got he's got his favorite champion. He probably well, probably might have said, "Guys, yeah. he's doing that." But anyway, the second match in was Kojima and Mox. Mox won with two uh, paradigm shifts, or they call it in Japan the Death Rider right. DDT. Then. The screen went, you hear wild thing, all of a sudden the music stops, and you hear Japanese music. Mm -hmm. And you see the words, the king. Yeah. Then you see Minoru Suzuki, and the crowd singing in Japanese to the song. Oh, boy. He came in, took off his shirt, and the, forums, the forum battle just started. And he's laughing at him. He's laughing at all. And he gave him a choke, and the guy stopped pile driver and just left. Well, it's interesting. Seems like they were trying to build up for Dynamite, but here's my question with that, though. I'm kind of worried about how they're going to book that. Because where's Dynamite going to be taking place? Cincinnati. And who's home play? Sin Moxley. Right. But how do they always book it? In, your, in a person's hometown, they always book it to lose. Mm. Oh, well, oh, well, Vince always does that. Vince does that. So far, they haven't done it. They haven't done it with Punk, and they haven't done it with Punk's on touch or Baker. Right Punk's on touch. Well, they didn't do it with Baker either. So I think they're, they're going the exact opposite. They're, they're doing the George Costanza thing. It's like whatever I think of, do the opposite. So it's, but like I said, Kojima and Moxley was just violent fun. It was just violent fun. And when Suzuki came out at the friend's house I was at, I jumped up, and I couldn't believe it. I, I, I you know probably he, had to clean off for John's screen afterwards. Yeah. Um, I know he's in the United States. I know he's going to be at the New Japan show we're going to be at. Yeah. Um, I know he's doing New Japan shows. I didn't know if he's doing indie shows or other shows. Mm -hmm. Your dream match might happen. <laughs> I 
I I thought that too. Yeah. This rematch might happen. Ooh. And like I said, when we I hope he doesn't meet and greet because I want him to laugh at me while we're taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I might get him to do. If I meet him, I might get him to do what Ed Bill the Butcher did with me. I. He took a picture where he's pretending to stab me in the head with a fork, made me just get him, you know. Do the forearm? Or, or just do the lap, you know. Just do <laughs> a, maybe do like a two second like TikTok where it's like back and forth. <laughs> he, yeah, I think I got a new nickname for him. He's the Joker who laughs. But anyway. <laughs> he, the way Ross <laughs> described him on the pay-per-view was he's the most dangerous man around and he, he's been known on Japanese paper or shows to attack commentators and Ross like I'm getting my ass out of here <laughs> I'm getting my ass out of here I'd like to see him hit um Excalibur oh yeah and, and, and it's probably the stupidest luchador mask ever but anyway he's been using it for years uh, but I mean nobody knew who the hell he was I mean it's not I never seen I, I remember him CCW I don't remember when he was with Super Dragon I never seen his face yeah now the next match Great match quality. Both guys, both girls can work. Was uh, Britt Baker and Chris Statlander match, and uh, Britt Baker won, and she with the locked jaw. And goddamn, these girls can work. Boop. <laughs> oh, the force boop. Did you hear about that? Yes, yes. Oh, the force boop was, was awesome. Oh well, yeah, and the, this came after her handicap match on Rampage against Rebel and uh, Hater. Hater. Mm. Um, yeah. And. I would like say it's a good. It was a good match. I mean, it was Baker. It, Baker's a workhorse. Baker is a goddamn workhorse. I can see a title in Statlander's future. Right. Okay. Uh, then you're going to hate me for saying this, but the cage match was match of the year candidate. No, but, I won't hate you for that because I like the outcome, and I've always said as much as I hate the Bucks, usually. Their better matches are with the Luchas. And, you it know. depends on your dance partner. And right. Your dance partner was the Luchas, and it, it exceeded all expectations and more. And, and it was bloody. It, you, did you hear about the shoe? The thumbtacks, yes. The, and then Penta climbing on the cage like his goddamn Jimmy Snuka. That yeah, was, oh, no, that was Phoenix. Oh, that was Phoenix. That was Phoenix. That. Phoenix is the dead of all the two. Mm. Um, Cutler threw. He stood back and threw a bag into the cage and pulled out the shoe. Matt Jackson just taken off his shoe. I was like, "What the hell's going on?" He looked at the bag. Go, oh my! That George, uh, like a George Akai, Oh my! Mm -hmm. And you saw the thumbtack shoe. Uh, Penta bled the hard way. Yeah. I think Phoenix bled the hard way with the, the thumbtacks. Nick Jackson was busted open. I mean, it was blood everywhere. Yep. I mean it. I, the Luchas won. I mean, they're the new tag champions, and I'm proud of them. They've come a long way. Because when they were in Impact, they never got the tag titles there. Right. Even though they feud with LAX in a series of great matches. And, uh, you think they'll keep it long? Uh, or you think... Probably to full gear. Yeah. Probably to full gear, and they'll probably lose it back, either back to the box or another team. Yeah. Or like FTR if they stay out here or something. Uh, like FTR. Oh, God, don't say that because I saw, I saw the video. I, I missed the actual incident that happened to yeah. him. Was it Hardwood or uh, the other one? I think it was Hardwood. But yeah, I mean, well, you missed it because when they showed it live, people missed it. But they just showed, you know, they showed like replays afterwards. I saw. heard they left before the pay per view. Yeah. They were there backstage, but they left before the pay-per-view. Mm. But, like I said, the tag titles cage match, I give it five stars. Mm -hmm. It okay. was everything, everything. And then, one of the pops of the night was the Casino's Women's Battle Royal. Mm -hmm. The Joker was Ruby Soho, formerly known as Ruby Riot. And did you hear the theme music? She, I, I didn't hear the theme music. I heard Rancid did it, though. Rancid, she came into Ruby Soho. Oh, okay. Uh, remember those vignettes have been, it's been put out on YouTube? Right. What is the course of Ruby Soho? Destination Unknown. Oh, okay. And she turned around and it said Destination at AEW. Mm. And on her ass it was written The Runaways. Right. So, her, the last two were her and Thunder Rosa. And again, Thunder Rosa's Thunder Rosa. Yes. The best worker in the business, I think. And her and Ruby, I could watch all day. Her and Ruby, I could watch all oh, yeah, that fucking one. day. Ruby won the woman was about royal. She was the Joker. She was the, she she was the wild card. She's going to be facing Britt Baker down the road. We just don't know if it's going to be on Dynamite, Rampage, or at Full Gear. 
Which, okay, it was cool, but she started off and... The, I don't know if she should, they should have had her win it. I should have... I, I, I would have rather seen her like come to the end and have her go against the heel and, like, I don't know, maybe against, like, Nyla Rose and Ricky Guerrero trip her up and then start, like, a feud or something. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's fair to some of those other girls to automatically give... Yeah. Her a title shot coming from... Like, yeah, Kim Finland, showed up yeah. for her first night on Raw one and beat... Uh, beat who was it? Who she beat for the woman's title? Was it Trish? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, Dory, that was the other, that was the only pop, because unlike the Rumble, you're coming out in suits, and there's yeah. four or five wrestlers at once, and you you can't cheer, you know... I, and I agree with Russell talk about this. You can't cheer certain guys because they're coming out all together. Right. And you don't know what direction you're going to go with the. Uh, the crowd was pretty. After the cage match, I think the pr- crowd kind of died down. They had no energy left. But I think that might have been purpose, you know, done by purpose for AEW for that reason to just try to get them to catch a breath and build up. Until, until Ruby came out in the pop in the building. I think she is from the Chicago area. Yeah. Because they talk about her time in Shimmer. And mm-hmm. Shimmer is yeah. in, in Barwin. And so just Berwin. Berwin, yeah. just outside of uh, Chicago. Right. And she's a home. They kept on saying, referring to her as the hometown girl. Mm. Uh, the next match, it was very old school, and I loved it. Was Jericho versus MJF? Jericho it could have been Jericho's last match. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about MJF's entrance? Yeah, they did the countdown clock. Then you saw it, Jericho's last match. I was like, "Oh, this is brilliant! Mm. This is brilliant!" Now the ending of that. There's a lot of controversy from what I've read. Some people liked it, some people didn't. The, 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 old, the leg on the uh, leg on the rope on the three count. The dusty finish, yeah. That I think I think Jericho, if, if Jericho booked that, he's an old schooler. Yeah. And he grew up watching all that stuff. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if he booked that. Yeah. Again, the crowd was pretty much sitting on their hands during this, even though uh, Jericho, one of Jericho's bandmates, played him in. Right. Yeah, and I I heard the guitar wasn't all that, you know, even though it's his band. Uh, yeah, but you heard more of the crowd singing the lyrics. Right. Um, I I liked it. I liked for the quality it was. Mm-hmm. It was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after that was, I I, I should have put the, you should they should have put this on a pre-show with QT Marshall versus Paul White. Again, I think they may have put that in just, just to the, quiet, just to calm the crowd down. Right. Because I mean that it, that's. That's usually reserved for, for for me for Ernest Cassidy. You know, you mm-hmm. go, you get your sandwich, you get your beer, you get your CM Punk ice cream bars. Because you know? you're going up, down, up, mm-hmm. down, up, down. Right. Uh, White one, of course, with a choke slam. Mm-hmm. And he's just, it, it, like I said, you, you get to watch it clear. Uh, after that is the world title match. Oh, wait, you left out one next. Oh, the Punk Darby match. Right. Which he came out. To the pop of the... Uh, I wouldn't say pop of the night until later. Right, right, right. Uh, he came out to a mega pop. He even, he even dove into the crowd. Like he's been doing. Yeah. Uh, I like what Russell Talk said. and I, I'm going to have to rewatch the match myself. He was telling a story of how he was shaking off the ring rust. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Yeah, that was, that was storyline, yeah. Yeah. This is what this is what they're beating WWE on. It's storytelling right now. Cause they show the same matches every week. Cause Vin, Vin. and then when they do change things up, it makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, it's like the st- stories are so incoherent. Is you know, here's my thing with WWE, and this is what I think it is: the fact that they're in bed with the Peacock. Peacock and Fox. Well, which in turn means Disney. Okay, you know, it's, it's corporate, but here's the thing. I think it's even deeper than that. The fact that they're involved with Peacock, which is NBC, basically. Euros, Euros, and oh, yeah. the programming that's on that app that is not WWE is Six. Parks and Recreation, 30 Rock, Saturday Night Live, all the shitty NBC comedy attached with Lorne Michaels and Saturday Night Live alumni. And that's who they're hiring for. WWE, and that's why their show their shows oh, are garbage. Oh, but we crap. Have, but we have Punky Brewster on there, the revival of her show, and uh, one of the Disney shows is now on there. I forgot which one. Good for them. You know what? Um, that's why Netflix is beating them on uh, quality of programming, right. also. 
That's why I don't want Peacock and I have a cat. But anyway. But he did. It, the, the, the one thing that the one thing that told the story about the ring rust is he hit the go to sleep and Darby rolled out of the ring. Right. He should have did it in the middle of the ring. That shows the quote unquote ring rust. Right. But it was a good match. And afterwards, I don't know what's said between Sting and CM Punk, but they shook hands yeah. and he shook hands of Darby. Right. Who do you think is Punk's next victim? Is it going to be Jungle Boy? Because he said something about the young, a younger talent. Um, you think, so you think he's just going to have face versus face matches or? Or just go after younger talent in total just to prove he's, he's still got it. I don't know, maybe like Garcia, he's, seems yeah. like they're trying to push him up, maybe like. Ricky. He came out of nowhere because I've never seen this guy so before. Actually, you know, I think it would be good, I mean, if you're going to go that route, Ricky Starks. Oh, absolutely, Ricky Starks, yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, if, you know, you, you know, Jungle Boy's a good possibility. Pockets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like to see him pull that shit on Punk. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Punk will slap him right in the face. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was one thing that I laughed at was um, with Darby when he did that coffin drop and then Punk just sat up. Oh, the set up was awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, my and he God. he just laughed like, you know, he set up like The Undertaker. It's funny as hell, but. Oh, but, um. Uh, Oh, how would you like to see Punk against Kingston? That would be... Well, yeah, that would be a good match. I'd rather hear a promo between Punk oh, and those, Kingston. Oh, I, I could hear that all day. Jeez Louise. That would be funny as hell. That was my second match of the night uh, behind the cage match was Punk and Darby. Okay. Yes, they, they delivered. They right. fucking delivered. Uh, th after that was Kenny and Christian. Mm. And boy, did they go through hell. Yeah. Oh, boy, did they both go through hell. I mean, the, the, the double, I think it was a double stop on through the table with Christian underneath it. Mm. And they kept on focusing on the head and neck on Christian. Right. Because... Storyline. Storyline, yeah. Uh, Kenny won with a one-wing angel off the top rope. Right. Uh, they continued to beat down. And Kenny, well, you were, were, do you remember what Kenny said in that promo? He said, nobody can beat me unless... They were retired or dead. Or not here. Or, and who they've been saying who has been dead since they went to the WWE? Bebe. Yeah, exactly. Adam Cole showed up to one of the loudest pops of the night. And, they, and, they, and the whole building went Adam Cole Bebe when he did it. Mm -hmm. But he immediately turned heel and super kicked uh, Jungle Boy. <laughs> and joined his buddies in the elite. And then he grabbed the bike. And said, who's ready for story time with Adam Cole, baby? Mm. And he referred to the light, no chance in hell. Oh, boy. That's a poke in the eye, isn't it? It is. That's, that's three stooges, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are they right there? And then, uh, then Omega grabbed the mic back and, and did his uh, adieu, goodbye, mama. Yeah, not a, and all of a sudden, you heard Flay of the Valkyries. Mm. You, you want to take it over from here? Well... Flight of the Valkyries? Hmm. Obviously, The Undertaker is an AEW. No, it's mm -hmm. all elite now. It was Brian Danielson. The American Dragon is back. Hmm. And I'm kind of surprised that they, although I guess the actual, that actual song is kind of public domain. But, um, you know. It came in, and then it changed to like a hip hop type song. Somebody said it was like a mix of Final Countdown. Hmm, okay, but, yeah, I guess they would have to, because, I mean, if they just did, I don't know, like, another metal group like Fozzy doing, you know, Flight of the Valkyries, I don't know, yeah. Mr. Burns might decide to sue or block it, kind of like what he did with our last episode. Fuck, Fuck you, old man. Yeah. Uh, but, um, Not that we have anybody who watches, I think, you know. Daniel Bryanson, Daniel... Brian Daniels. Brian Danielson, sorry, I'm, I'm confused because he keeps on flipping his name around. But um, I did a running knee on Nick Jackson. Mm -hmm. So, hey, did you hear about the post right after the cameras went off? Uh, what he said? No. He said this is AC AEW. Let's fucking go. Right. <laughs> and there's now rumors about Bellas. Uh, why? Why not? Probably, it's a wonder we haven't seen Lana yet. Mm. Or the Iconics. Alright, AEW, it's cool. We're getting these moments. We're getting these dream matches. Alright, stop bringing damn WWE people. You, okay, you gotta cut it off sometime, somewhere. 
Okay. You can't put everybody on Dark or Rampage. Right. Or even the YouTube shows. I mean, it's like, okay, Ruby Riot, yeah, that's cool. I mean, she's a good wrestler and all, but she was never, like, a main event person, okay? You're going to push her as main event now. You know that, right? For the women, that's kind of, that division, it's easy to do, actually. Yeah, but. because there's, it's either that, Thunder, or Nala Rose. Or Statlander. You're talking as far as... The contender, contender for yeah. Red, yeah. I, I don't know. I'd like to see me some hater, but... Ty Conte? Ty Conte? Well, Ty Conte, see, yeah, they Or Anna Jay, which now she's back? Conte more than Anna yeah. Jay. Anna Jay's, you know, pretty lady, but... I mean, Conte actually has some... You know, some... Yeah, 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 she was so. uh, traded by the Gracie family, if I understand. Right. But all in all, great pay-per-view. I wouldn't want to be in Vince's vicinity for all the tea in China during this thing. Nope. Because he was probably really... You ever heard the term biting nails? He's probably biting carpenter nails. Well, the problem is, though, I mean, a lot of these are... It's self-inflicted. It's people he didn't think were worth paying the money, worth keeping around, anything like that. He decided to let them go. He's like, all right, yeah, we'll let... We'll let AEW buy up all that stuff. Let them spend their months and those into bankruptcy. Well, did you hear where Braun Strowman is going? Where is he going now? Impact. Okay. He's going to Impact. That's what. That's the stories I've been hearing. Um, Impact is making a play, play for Bray Wyatt. Mm. He would fit in with the whole Sue Young Rosemary thing. He would. And uh, and Impact, I think they. I mean he. They're more favorable for bigger guys than I think off the team. Because you really don't have a lot of hosses in impact other than Matt Man Fulton, Cass, and Moose. Moose. Yeah. That's it. Right. And you you get a hoss like Strowman, yeah, he'll put asses in seats, but who are you gonna pair him up against? But that's the thing with impact though. It's like do they put any asses in seats? I mean, do they put anybody on TV? Uh they they've been letting crowds into the Nashville tapings, maybe a hundred, two hundred people. Exactly. Okay, that's and that's but they said That's a wet dream for them. Bound yeah. for Glory will be at Sam's Club in Vegas. And they're going to be doing TV tapings there. So we'll see how many people they're going to actually pull in. Alright. Because Sam's Club usually does uh, Ring of Honor. Hmm. And I, uh, back in the day, and I remember watching those shows from, uh, from Sam's Club, they packed it. Yeah, right. But it's his impact. We don't know if they're going to pack it. You might see a lot of empty seats. I think we will. Yeah, but it's the alternative to what we're seeing right now on Monday night, Mondays, Wednesday, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. Right. Because if you think about it, there's a wrestling show every night of the week now. It is. Literally every Raw night. Raw Monday, NXT, AEW, Impact, SmackDown, and Rampage. You also and, have NWA, you have Ring of Honor, yeah. you have, if you go on a fight app, would which... which John said, it, you said John got the AEW paper. They have all kinds, they can get o, Ohio Valley's on there. They have GCW's a, on there? GCW's on there. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. You want to mention what happened Saturday night, I mean, the, the, the last show? Yeah, because, well, in the AEW match, people, you may have noticed, folks, Moxley was wearing a GCW zip up sweatshirt. Yeah. And because at the last show, he beat Matt Cardona to whoop. become the new. GCW World Champion. Remember, I showed you the sent you the picture where Cardona did to the belt. Right, exactly. He, he made it. He his, it. Yeah. He made it a spare title and Velcro straps just to piss the fan base off. And also, did you see the one picture where he dressed up as a hardcore icon? No. He wore the black band. If you remember when e, when Vince made himself ECW World Champion. Yeah. And he had the. Headband and all black suit. Yeah. Cardona did the same oh, thing. Oh God, he knows how to work the fans, man. Oh yeah. He, he is such a mark for himself. It's not funny. He is such a mark for himself. Mm. It, him and Chelsea, and Chelsea's been putting shit out there on her podcast, and just as equally as good as Cardona's been putting on Twitter. And I'm surprised Chelsea didn't show up at the pay per view. Well, yeah. See, I mean, she's busy with. NWA, she was also... Ring of Honor? Ring of Honor, she was a commentator on that. And in NWA, they've actually showed, re from the recent tapings, she's turning into the hot mess again. Oh, the makeup is smeared and all the hairs everywhere? 
Cool. Well, she didn't do that yet, but she lost her shit on, at the end of a match and just started going, well, going she, on a temper tantrum. And uh, when she was the hot, when she was Laura Van Ness, the hot mess, when she was wrestling in the wedding dress, I thought that, and that came out of her head from what I heard. That was a great character. Mm-hmm. And that shows that she could be creative. Right. And let her run with it. Let her run with everything she's got. See what she's, uh, throw it to the wall, see what sticks. I like the WWE, it was throwing everything in the wall, see what sticks. Yeah, yeah and hmm, I don't know if you want to smell what that rocket's cooking. Holy shit. Oh, did you hear what Vince's dream match with Roman's going to be? Uh, can't wait. The Rock. Of course. It, either Rock or Lesnar. He's going to get Lesnar first. It's going to be at Saudi Arabia. And that's another thing. Vince doesn't give care about the fans anymore. He's even said that. He even said, I don't care what you got they want. All right. Well, he said during the pandemic that fans only made up 30% of that company's revenue. Bullshit. Now, now that year they said it was, he said because there were no ticket sales, they only had like merchandise online and... And then, you know, then people buying the network before they went. And we're top. making record profits, but there's budget cuts. We have to cut people. Well, no, the record profits is because they're being funded by Al-Qaeda or whatever. Or Saudi Arabia yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean. It's Saudi Arabia. And don't forget the $1 billion for 10 years on Peacock. Yeah. Which is now, I think they took over in Canada also. The network's not on their own network anymore. It's through to Peacock. Oh, speaking of other countries with them, did you hear who they broke off from? Who? They broke off their Japanese. Oh, yeah, they shut down everything. And that means Kari Zane, who's in Japan, can go wherever the fuck she wants. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll show. I like, you know my big New Japan mark? Yes. At the pre-show, at the Grand Slam show at MetLife Dome, they had a stardom match. Uh Uh-huh. First time they've ever had a stardom, a stardom show or match on one of their main cards, other than Kingdom. Right. It shows they're progressing with their culture of towards women, I think. Uh, having a mixed card, almost. Mm. Do you think so? I don't know. I, I've never been to Japan. I'd love to go to Japan. I mean, I but like... you know how they treat the women there, you know? You have to have a traditionalist on it. I, you know, I, I, like the, I like how... I like how the... Female musicians in Japan, especially the metal bands over there, are treated. Love bites, love bites, love bites. <clears throat> love bites, man made. Eric, all this is a got. It, it's got like a whole burgeoning scene from there, but that's not what this it is. Shows about. right now. But um, I, I did watch the New Japan show from MetLife Stadium again. You, you're the baseball guy. Mm-hmm. You did, I don't know what team. I don't know what city MetLife Dome is. Um, they only had maybe him. Tokyo's of Egg Dome. I mean, it could be. I'm trying to think. If, it trying a, to think if Yokohama has a dome or not. They might be, well, yeah, because for a while they had an outdoor park that was along the. Sure, I mean, and you a lot of older fans have probably seen some FMW and IWA King Deathmatch tournaments there. Yeah. I actually got to meet Dan Severn and interviewed him about his match with Tarzan Goto and he told me some interesting stuff about that but, but like I said I watched the New Japan show they only had maybe maybe a thousand people in the crowd and that's probably because of they're COVID spiking like they're, yeah. yeah they're spiking like crazy over there which is kind of bizarre because you think they would obey the law over there and get the shots yeah I mean and the Low percentage of people being vaccinated there really surprises me, as I've said on previous episodes. But Now, here's the thing. We, what we've been wanting to see, who would attack the Bucks or the Good Brothers? Oh, yeah, the... Oh, the the Tongans. Gor- yeah, the ber- Gorillas. They're yeah. not going to be there because they're part of the G1 tournament. Oh. Tama Tonga is... Uh, Tama Loa is in Block A and Tama Tonga is in Block B. So we might... If they go both get enough points, we might see a tongue in uh, Civil War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we could probably see them two weeks or a month down the road. Well, it's a month and a half tournament, so they have to go through the entire tournament. Ah. Mm-hmm. And, and after that, after that, I think is World Tag League, and uh, I think the Super Juniors they're going to mm-hmm. So they're going to be part of World Tag League because the winner of that gets the tag title shot at Kingdom. Ah. Which was announced. It's not just one night. It's not just two nights. It is going to be three nights now. 
January 4th, 5th, and 8th. Hmm. I think so the first two nights in Tokyo Dome, and I think the next one's in Yokohama. Well, that reminds me. I found out that the New Japan we're going to in Philadelphia is one of two nights there. Yeah. Like I said, uh, they, they announced Osprey, who is right now in two-week quarantine. Because mm. uh, he, he has COVID. He tested positive. Um, and then Archer's going to be there. Who do you want to meet more? Suzuki, Archer, or Osprey? Out of those three, very close, maybe slight edge of Suzuki just because he's a knucklehead. <laughs> he's a crazy old man. Archer he seems like he'd be, I've seen him, you know, in a lot of shoots. He seems like he'd actually be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and Osprey's a British prick, so. <laughs> Osprey banging beat for easily, so he gets my respect. Yeah, he gets my respect, too. Yeah. But, um,. Uh, I can't wait for that show. I do not know what the car's going to be like because Tanahashi's part of the G1, so he's not going to be here. The one name I didn't see was Ishii, so Ishii might be there too. Well, Billy Tom Waller will be there too because he'll, he, if he he's still has strong, a belt. Doesn't yeah. he have a strong, strong belt? Yep. Okay. Well, you'll be going the week before at MLW. Well, it's two weeks. Actually. Two weeks before that. Yeah. And you, you'll see if there's... Uh, well, they won't give any hints about that show coming out. I don't think there's any working relationship with New Japan at all. No. Um, I do know there... Well, there's a couple things going on with that. It, they have a tournament called the Opera Cup, which they've had the last three years. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a tournament that they kind of brought back from the Stampede Wrestling days. Wow. Um, yeah, it was um, when there was a Hart Foundation in MLW. I think um, Davey Boy Smith Jr. had a hand in bringing that over. But... They fight over, it's, it's kind of like the Jim Crockett Cup, except it's for singles. Uh -huh. And it's a tournament there, and uh, and Tommy Law were, was the last winner of it. I think um, Davey Boy Smith Jr. won it the year before. In fact, he went up against Pillman Jr., so wow. who were tag team partners. Oh, uh, so kind of interesting. Speaking of Davey Boy Smith Jr., you know he resigned with Vince. Yes. Well, yeah, what the... With the yeah, what division did he go to? Uh, he's on. He's doing dark matches right now for either Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. But somebody, asked, I haven't read the article yet. I'm gonna read it when I get home. As uh, somebody asked Ruby Ruby Soho about these kids who have dreams about going to WWE. If I was Ruby, I would say there's other fish. There's the ocean's vast, and there's other places you can go to. Right. Yeah. But, granted, the WWE. It's been hammered in our heads that it's the big one. Not anymore after after the, the pay per view. Probably still the biggest payday. Probably still the biggest globally. I mean, AEW. Okay, they're like the second biggest here. I don't know if too many people that have heard of them. I mean, I know, the United States. Yeah, I mean, UK. They're popular and you know all that, but I don't think I don't think all that's going to have like people traveling from Australia to see AEW. I could be wrong. They, like WrestleMania. Yeah, Mania. Like yeah, this is their mania, so I think people from all over were there. Well, maybe. I knew I mean, people from here who try to get tickets. Well, okay, people. Yeah, but I'm saying in the United States. But I mean, yeah, it's, I'm talking international as, being, as far as being an international draw. Yeah. Probably New Japan is probably worldwide is probably the biggest. Great, great. Uh, Second biggest. I great. Say. WWE may have the biggest capital. I don't know compared to the Khan family. Yeah. There's and down the road is other promotions like MLW, which is starting to gain momentum. Getting they, they got the TV deal. Yeah. Um, Impact has a TV deal that on a station nobody can find. Exactly. But uh, they on YouTube, which you got to pay a dollar to watch or some shit like that uh, for Impact. Uh, they have you got Ring of Honor, which has a bank account with behind it with Sinclair Broadcasting. Right. And they're, they're syndicated, and they're also on flight. And I found out what they show on flight is just a replay of what they show over the weekend, and they yeah. are up to date. So. Yeah. But uh, do you agree with her, though, that there's other things, there's other venues to go there to? There are now. I mean, not long ago there, that was, was not the case. Yeah, because Vince gobbled everything up. Yeah. And I said this previous shows, the, they're, they're now attacking the bully. He was the bully. The bullies get out getting beat up by the smaller people. Yeah. Well, it seems like that now, but I don't, I don't know. It's... You think of Vince or Lindor? 
Something would have to change drastically, yeah. I mean... He, he lasted over 88 weeks almost going out of business with Ted Turner. Right. I mean, that, that's probably and that's probably how he feels. It's like... This I mean, it's like... I, actually, I remember in the big shoot thing that WWE did about McMahon, they had um, JBL basically say the same thing about it. It's like, this man, he's fought the federal government, he's fought Ted Turner, and he, and he told, them all, told them all to go to hell. And that's probably what way he feels now. Yeah. But, again, let Hunter take over. He had the right idea of NXT. I know, I, I know, I, he, he tried to make it an indie level like AEW. He's right. got that grand scale indie level. Mm -hmm. Vince doesn't like that. No. Vince wants big guys. He wants guys to remain main event. WrestleMania. Yeah. And plus, he doesn't like He's matches so called as wrestling matches. He wants them just to tell their their own storylines. Like I mean, Joey Styles even had issues with that word. Well, Vince is a size this also. Uh, he doesn't like anybody who's my size, your size, or under. Well, there's a bunch of guys. Uh, 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 I, I, I mean, I'm the size of way to Roddy Piper when he was in the heyday. Then the okay, Gargan. I wouldn't be surprised if they let go Gargano and Champa soon. Yeah. And Gargano's gonna be a father for the first time, by the way. Well, I mean, if it happens in the woods and nobody hears it, does it really happen? He's Johnny Wrestling. He can go wherever he wants. Okay. Well, he might do that. But I, I'm going to have the Raw on. I'm not going to probably, I'm just going to pay attention barely and play video games because I, I, they lost me. Yeah. I'm doing it for this show. I'm, I'm doing it for this show. You can just get the results for this show. And yeah, I mean, it's... And just watch highlights. I yeah, mean, you know, watch highlights or whatever. It, it just... It's the same monotonous bullshit, Vince. Vin, you're almost 80. Get the fuck out of the business. I think it will, it'll happen very soon. I think that's... He's trying to sell it before... While he's still around. What, you, we both said this on previous shows. I think he's consolidating. Yeah. Because... Somebody said on, uh, on a messenger earlier to me, our, our mutual friend Will, who said... If Vince goes, <laughs> you think if Nick Khan takes over, he's going to fire Hunter and uh, and, and Sean? Yeah, he might. You never know. Because they're wrestlers, and they know about wrestling. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't even surprise me that if... I mean, a lot of people think they're going to sell to Peacock or to Disney or Fox or something. It wouldn't surprise me if they were just bought by whoever's giving them money from Saudi Arabia. The Saudi government itself? Well, we're going to get Queen of the Ring there, which, yeah. wow, in a Saudi country where women are second class, not even second, third class citizens. Mm. And everybody, they're going to be covered from head to toe. Yeah. Like in body suits and t-shirts to cover up all the curves. Because that's the way, that's their life there. Right. And Rey Mysterio will have to get a different, what's on the middle of Rey Mysterio's mask? Oh, a cross, yeah. He can't wear that there. Sami Zayn can't go there. I had heard when they had Mal the, the now Malachi Black, he had issues because he had... The devil on his back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, going back to the pay-per-view, Malachi Black had a promo. Mm. This upcoming Dynamite is going to be Malachi Black versus Dustin Rhodes. How, often, how, how bloody do you think Dustin's going to be? Oh... He's going to be a bloody, bloody... Man. He's done it before, so... Black is a buzzsaw. And they're talking about maybe adding to the House of Black. Make it a faction. Because you can't have a... you got to have a faction if you're AEW. That's, right. the only, that's the only thing I don't like. There's too many factions. Yeah. Like Ring of Honor had back, what, uh, in 07? Mm -hmm. Where you had the Hangman 3, Generation Next, uh, Special K, all that shit. Right. I mean, you, um, uh, what was Jimmy Jacobs' uh, 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 what's it called, Legends of the Fall or some shit like that? Or Age of the Fall. Age yeah. of the Fall. With him and Tyler Black. Or uh, now Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, the only, th the other thing I don't like about SmackDown is the, the Becky Lynch heel turn. It, I'm not convinced. No. I'm not convinced. It's a soft heel turn. Right. He, she's acting... If she wants to be a total, total bitch dick heel, she should do total bitch dick things and say, you're not getting your rematch. 
Like, come out and attack See, well, she did that Friday. What is she? Uh, like, yeah, I was inebriated, so. Uh, basically, it was like, you know, she came. Bianca Copper came out and challenged her and said, nah, I'm not going to do that. And I think, and I think, it was the usual bullshit with Carmella and all that, you know. And she's like, walk away, like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Well, the only Carmella thing I remember is they're setting up a few with her to live Morgan. Right. Which, I'm liking to live. Mm. As a worker? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Do you no. see her as a good worker? She's probably okay, but I mean, I she's don't know. not on level of Becky or uh, what is it kind of? What does she call herself? Big time Bex? I don't know. I mean, I don't have enough interest in seeing those two go at it. I'm at least not in WWE. Yeah, yeah. But Maybe. there isn't anything really I want to see in WWE other than the Roman Reigns thing. You know, and seeing Heyman's facial reactions to everything. Right. Because that's selling the story right now. And that's all of their shows. There isn't anything wrong. Even Lashley. And that Lashley, they got him stuck in a feud with Gold Turd. And then NXT, it's like, well, we're, we're I don't getting, know what the hell they're well, doing. Well, we're getting hints, maybe extreme rules, that Lashley might be getting a Viper. Oh. Because he did get, he, he did RKO on the last roll. You know, I mean, we're seeing the same people fight over and over. And they've been doing this for years, for decades. Now... I'm tired of it. On the last Raw, like we said, Vince was having a hissy fit and tearing up scripts. Alexa Bliss wasn't on there. And it looks like they were... Oh, do you want to talk mm. about Charlotte and Nia? Yeah. Oh, boy. That was the thing everybody was talking about after the previous Raw. Well, you mentioned Alexa Bliss. Originally, it was supposed to be her against yeah. Miss Spooky Bullshit. But and and you know. actually, with Vince Kipper tearing up scripts, did you read Alexa's Twitter that night? Says I'm here, I'm still here. Right, yeah. <laughs> but it was supposed to be also Miz versus Morrison. Miz wasn't even there. Right. And they're squashing Morrison again. Well, there's a. I saw a report recently. There might be a reason for that, though. Why? Well, Mr. Miz, despite in storyline needing a wheelchair to get to the ring, he can place in a celebrity softball match in the MLB All Star Weekend. And apparently he can also be participating in the upcoming episode of Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, I heard about that. And I, didn't they film that in Sorry in the Can? <laughs> yeah, if it's not, it should be in a can. <laughs> a can of tuna. <laughs> but, um... Well, Jericho did it. I know. Uh, what are, uh, the Bellas, one of the Bellas did it. Yeah, I think some of our favorite Baltimore Ravens have even done it, too. Ray did it, didn't he? He did it, mm. and, and somebody else. Well, I know they've had a few football players. Yeah. Uh, and the stuff. Oh, but um. Yeah, I think he won it. Actually. Well, but anyway, they they're squashing Morrison, and I don't like that because Morrison's a good good. I liked him in Impact. I never saw him in Lucha. Yeah. And I did see him a little bit in, in Triple Way. Mm -hmm. uh, he's good. He's very good. It, it's like the Dolph Ziggler treatment. The problem is, yeah, they do have a lot of talent, but they can't let them use it. Mr. Burns doesn't want them to use it. They want them to have stupid ass Saturday Night Live writers write them stupid stories and make no damn sense. And they have to memorize those lines and It's so robotic. Right. And a lot of I've I forget who somebody on YouTube, maybe it was Cornette said something about with Tony Khan. He comes he has a background in Hollywood and he's basically Treating WWE like a movie studio. You mean like, Nikon? Yeah, Nikon, yeah. He's treating them like a movie studio where it's. He's had. He feel like, okay, they have actors coming in and out, and you know. Oh, I want to see back. your reaction when I saw what I read last week. What? Uh, apparently, Scarlet is going to be the real life Lily. Yes, that's what I'm hearing. Scarlet who? Scarlet, you know, with uh, Carrie and Cross, Scarlet. Oh, oh, God. She's going to be a little, a real life Louie. And a lot of people have been wondering why you haven't seen her because, you know, seen her with Carrie and Cross. That's you mean, what they're gonna you mean the reject her? from the Road Warrior? Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the outfit? The, the helmet and everything. Oh, you mean, the, yeah, yeah. He looks like the, he looks like the big boss from uh, Road Warrior. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like the humongous gimmick, but instead of having a black 
Jason Hockey Mask is red. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, uh, you're a big guy. I'm going to make you the next humongous. Uh, God. Uh, please. But uh, I want to talk about Nia Jax and Charlotte. Mm. And apparently things got a little feisty. Yeah. Uh, where slaps were, real slaps were made, real punches were made. Um, because apparently Nia, Nia Jax almost ended Charlotte's career with a uh, backdrop. With yeah, pretty run. much Nia Jax wanted to celebrate Labor Day weekend week early by, you know, giving Charlotte some potato salad. Mm-hmm. And uh, was it one of them busted open? I think. I think. I don't know if it was that week. I remember there's one week where Nia was. That was from um, from um, Rhea. Yeah. But they're going to they're going to have another match on the upcoming Raw again. Vince apparently is liking what he's seeing the real life interaction bullshit. But again, they uh, hate each other. They real life hate each other. Yeah. But it's a heel versus heel feud. It don't make any sense. You know why? Where is her? Where's her fiance? You think it's a punishment for Charlotte? Eight weeks of tables. Remember that. Eight weeks of tables. Eight weeks of tables. Olana. Remember that. She ate eight weeks of tables <laughs> before they finally let her go. From Nia Jax. Jesus. That's just eight weeks separately. Eight weeks in a row. Mm. And if I was if I was C.J. Perry. Which was Lana, and if she does come out, I would. I know she can't mention names, but I would do the best shoot promo on the WWE I could without saying any names. Mm. And you know, you know, she's got it in her. Yeah, I, I like to see her somehow come up with a finishing move called my hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait for that. I can't wait. I'm actually going to tune in on to see what the Nia Jax Charlotte deal is going to be. See if they get a little chippy again. Mm. I think I think they're going to have them. In Vince is in Vince is going to be talking to them separately. Okay. You think so? He may have done it already. Or is he going to send one of his underlings, like uh, like a uh, con or yeah. or, or people Richard, power, yeah. or even Leonard Knights, who is now head of talent relations. And I've always wondered about him. This is one thing. Just from what he talks, I'm wondering if any wrestlers actually nickname him laryngitis because it sounds like he has it. That's what his nickname was. Oh, now, when he was hiring girls, back, way back in the, before, during the Diva era, yeah, he got them for, with no wrestling ability whatsoever because they look good on a stripper pole. Well, again, it's... Kelly Kelly. Well, not only that, it's... He and Bruce Pritchard, they don't know how to spot talent. They only know to what scout talent what they, think, what they think Mr. Burns will like. And Mr. Burns, and Jim Cornette said this a few times, where it's like, is both Vince McMahon and Vince Russo had a thing for women in white bras and panties. So it's like... Blondes, especially. Blondes, especially. So, with, yeah. big with big tits. Yeah, okay, so he said lines rake, callus, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. They ain't gonna draw... You know what we're going to draw? What we saw with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker a few, about a few months ago with that uh, no sanction match. That drew. That had eyeballs on them. Yeah. Okay? Well, because they were as violent and bloody, yeah. Yeah, but it's women. Right. And you don't see women doing that type of match. Vince ain't going to have that match on, on, on his television. No, I, in his event, though, I think a lot of sponsors would probably complain about that, though. That's... Well, like I said, Domino's kind of, well, gave him shit about the whole Nick Gage thing. Right. But I heard somebody within the WWE narc on him. Right, yeah, we mentioned that on a previous episode. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't mind, uh, I bet you somebody to love with the last name of Khan. And uh, there were allegations about that. But then again, it's like you, the source, you have to consider the source. So yeah. Knows. But uh, going forward... I'm looking forward to Moxley and Suzuki. They're going to just beat the living shit out of each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to beat the living shit out of each other. And since New Japan is doing a tour, a state, tour of the States, do you think Moxley's going to be at that show? That we're going to be at in Philly? Maybe as a surprise. I don't know. They, they have 
actually, I mean, for for a small arena like that, I think they have some decent star power as it is. If, he, I mean, he showed up at GCW shows. Well, I mean, he is, I mean, and I wouldn't rule it out, man, only because he does that for fun. He, yeah. he, he likes doing that. Okay. True. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking for Malachi Black and Dustin Rhodes. Poor Dustin. Somebody, somebody, uh, somebody talk to his daughter. She's going to have to pick the remains of her father. Yeah, I had even heard that they're basically feeding him opponents to set up for when Cody Rhodes comes back from his stupid reality show yeah, or whatever the hell Yeah, it was. he's doing a judging reality show, which will probably, they're probably doing group tapings. I would give them maybe another month before he comes yeah. back. Probably for full gear. Mm-hmm. We'll probably do, we'll probably get the, the payoff match in full gear. Right. Um, I would love to see, I, I never heard Ruby do promos that much. So it would be interesting to see what the promo work between her and Brett are going to be. remember doing someone in WWE. I mean, basically, I mean, she was the leader of the Riot Squad. He always now, did a talking thing. Now, I, it's a quinky dink in my head. Uh, what was the card she drew at the pay-per-view? Joker. What was she dressed as at, at WrestleMania? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, she had the Joker hair and Joker tights and all that. And, uh, well, Liz, Liz, I, I Liz think was Harley. Yeah, I, well, maybe that back then. But I think for this show, I think it was just more of the punk thing. I think it's because Chicago punk. Chicago Ruby because of where she's based out of. Right, but I'm just saying it's, I mean, she's kind of like, uh, I, I mean, she's always kind of had that gimmick anyway, but it's like, or she's had it for a long time, I should say. I mean, she's kind of, I think she's riding on Chick Magnus, you know. Yeah. Now, what do you think of them using the real music instead of, uh, like, fabricated music like Vince does? Depends. Like, um, Call of Personality, Fozzy, uh, Ruby, so- uh, Rancid, uh, yeah. and what was the other one? Um, what was the fourth one? Oh, uh, Wild Thing from uh, Joan Jett. Mixed. I, I mean... The wild thing, for one thing, I always think of Onita, okay? That's... Yeah. All right, that's... And I actually, I like the music that they did for him better, which is far and few between with... Because whoever did AEW's... A lot of AEW's music... Ugh, like Darby's music? That, yeah, that voice on that is like... Oh, it's God. like... A, it's, a, it, it's almost like mumble rap. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like mumble punk almost. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I know what you're, yeah, I know yeah. What you're saying. But I like it because, you, you, like I said, when Suzuki came out and the crowd was singing along in Japanese, yeah. they know the lyrics. They know the lyrics. And you actually heard them shout out the chorus. Well, I mean, AEW's audience pretty much. Very they're snarky. The, yeah, very, very snarky. snarky. They're the quote-unquote smart marks. They're the, yeah. basically the convention crud infested people who live in their mom's basement more or less. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> it's like what Ben Affleck said in the movie in Chasing Amy about the yeah. by comic yeah. books. It's the, it's the overweight and underweight that don't get laid. That's Hi, how AEW. you doing? <laughs> yeah. That's your AEW audience, pretty much. I, but, uh, you know, like, you see some women in some of these shows, but it's not like it used to be. I was at a grocery store today, and we talked about the pay-per-view, or I talked about the pay-per-view, a, uh, a young couple, and the woman was very talkative about it. Ah. Yes. And if they're listening to us, thank you very much for the subscription. Yeah, all five uh, of you. Thank you. All five you. of you. Uh, I was at a metal show recently, and I uh, let people know about our show. We actually are probably drove a subscription rate up. Thank mm-hmm. you very much for that. Uh-huh. Um, but Vince, 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 what else can we say about Vince that we haven't said yet? Fuck you, Vince. 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 Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I don't care what you say. <laughs> yeah. I hung out with Rock, and we said this on the last show. I hung out with Ruckus lately, you know, MCW wrestler, CZW wrestler, former CZW world champion. And he talked about, remember when he lost all the weight? Yeah. And he, and he was under the direction of Shane McMahon. And when Vince saw him and he actually talked to Vince about a tryout, Vince flipped out because he thought he was going to still see this dope, this dope boy 
doing all those flips. Right. And he got into shape because of Shane. And literally, there's no communication between the two. Mm. And th that shows you how much he listens to his family. Wow. That's his son. Okay, but that doesn't mean his son's... I mean, his son's worked for him off and on, you know? Yeah. Ben still makes the final decisions, you know. This is the guy who wanted to do an incest storyline with his daughter. Right. And his daughter shot him down. And he greenlit the thing with Katie Vick. Yes. With Hunter. Alright. I think Hunter... Was Hunter still under the punishment for because of the curtain call at that time? No, no, no. It was long after. Yeah, that. okay. But, um... <sighs> I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say about... Fuck you, Vince. Yeah. We don't care what you say. Fuck you. Yeah. It, WWE is really hard to watch. I mean... Hard to watch? Like I said, I have it on while I'm playing video games on a PSP. Just to have it on just so I can hear what's going on. Yeah, that's something a lot of grumpy old men do. Play video games. Yeah, okay, whatever, dude. But, uh, I, I, Well, okay. Well, I shouldn't say that. I got a Galaga machine right behind me. Yeah. But anyway. Um, but, yeah. It's... We... We, need some, we want something fresh and new. We got it in the pay-per-view. We got... Look, I've been telling you this. I think the Bucks and Omega and even Cody are running from the Japanese way. The storytelling is long-term. New Japan storytells for three years in advance. They're doing long-term storytelling. WWE used to do that. Vince Senior used to do that for a while. Yeah. That's the old school way. I mean, Gato, he's either Jado or Gato booking. I think it's Gato. Gato's booking New Japan and he's damn near perfect at it. With the long-term storytelling. And I don't know who's helping him out with the booking committee, but he's doing fucking excellent work. All right. Well, I don't know who's, who who is on the booking committee on uh, on on AEW. It's got to be the Bucks. It's got to be Kenny. Do you think Tony's part of that at all? Yeah, he's probably more production side, I'd say. But it's like it's probably probably the Bucks, Kenny, and maybe oh, Cody. Okay. But Cody might and Cody might have backed off. Uh, we always said this promotion's by or, by. Or the, we might not have backed off. He might be more behind the scenes. Maybe he's just more hands on behind. Well, with this. Reality show, quote unquote, coming up with the Rhodes family. Are we going to see more behind that, and we're going to learn who's the Booker? Probably not. I mean, they'll learn what they want us to see. I mean, it's it looks like it's going to be another Mister and Mrs. Miz or whatever that stupid. Show. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Ms. Miz, oh uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Mauricio. Yeah, but it's going to be le less less funny. <laughs> right. But uh, because Miz plays it up for laughs. But, um, I, I'll check out the first episode. Speaking of which, uh, you know Dark Side's coming back on. Yeah. And one of the episodes, I think it's the one upcoming one first, is Luna Vachon. Oh, that is going to be the first one. Okay, Is cool. it Luna Vachon or The Plane Right From Hell? Both would be interesting. Who can, they, who can they talk to that doesn't work for Vince anymore for, about The Plane Right? X-Pac? He was there? X-Pac probably... With Hall on that? Yes, and wasn't Bischoff part of the crew back then? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, because they can't talk to um, Regal, because he was... Yep, and they can't talk to Brock. No. A Angle. Angle, Angle yeah. Angle, remember, there was, wasn't was there like a shoot fight between him and Kurt Henning? Yeah. Or was it uh, Brock and Kurt Henning? And, I mean, they could talk to other people, not just wrestlers. I mean, they could probably... They could probably find, like, the stewardess who was on that or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, they talk to Uncle Dave. Mm. Uh, the Luna Vachon one is going to be very interesting because you know they're going to talk to Gangrel. Gangrel, probably Kevin Sullivan. Kevin, Kevin Sullivan. Um, too bad Bigelow isn't around anymore because Bigelow would have been great. Um, too bad Nancy isn't around anymore. She could probably tell some interesting Stevie. stories. Stevie. Stevie Richards. The test testicular claw. Remember oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They'll probably remember her time in ECW when she was fighting men. And they have a lot of, yeah, they could talk to the ICP, they could talk. They could talk to anybody there. I mean, well, and they and they have Cornette as a regular. He probably had some stories about her. Well, she, she, she was working there when Cornette was there. And WWE, yeah, that's true. And so. they might talk to, um, <laughs> Russo. <laughs> yeah, Brow. Yeah. Brow. 
Bro, come here, bro. Come, bro, bro. I remember seeing on YouTube somebody made a thing where they said that he cut a Luna sound promo against Jer- when she was around feuding with Jerry Martel, and they put like music behind it. and They made it sound like a cradle filth or like. <laughs> it's funny as shit, but. But they, the one I'm really interested in is, is at XPW one because I heard they are going to cover the Messiah issue. Right. And the thumb. And they're probably going to talk to Mr. Welch. And that will probably, oddly enough, be more of a mainstream true crime type of documentary for that. Not just because you do have some stuff with wrestling, but you also have, you know, pro- the, the probably porno. the porno. There's probably some drugs involved. Well, you have, and you have the assigned hit. I mean, I mean, America's Most Wanted did a thing about it, the Messiah. Uh, well, did you hear that Rob Black restarted XPW? Really? It's doing East Coast tours. You know, I saw a Facebook group about it, but I thought it was just, you know, some... I, oh, I, I read it on Twitter, and people were attacking Rob Black left and right about it. Right. They're going after him for, for well, Twitter's Twitter, so... Right. But... XPW. I want to see what they do to about FMW. There's going to be an FMW episode. Are they going to talk about Hayabusa? Mm. They're going to talk about the day in day out exploding ring matches. They had to go almost almost every day. Right. The body's got to heal. Well, I mentioned before I spoke to Dan Severn about the death match he had with um, Tarzan Goda, and the only reason I asked that is. Where he did it was at a local mixed martial arts gym in Maryland who friends with the owner of his name, an old fighter named John Bone Shattuck. He's a former Golden Gloves and mm-hmm. teaches MMA. Well, he had did a seminar with some kids before he interviewed and, he, and his own quote, he said, back in my days when, where I was a crazy person and, you know, in professional wrestling, you know, and he mentioned that. And then I kind of opened that up with the the question I asked him said, in your days as as a crazy professional wrestler, um, you know, I remember seeing a tape with you, Tarzan Goto, said, oh yeah, the Kawasaki death match. And then he went into detail basically saying that before the match, Terry Funk came to him and warned him. He said, hey man, look, they don't test for AIDS here. They don't test for tetanus or any of that stuff. Watch that stuff here, you know. He warned Dan Severn about it. That might be brought up in the, in the dark side. So, yeah, so, because he's a, he's a, he's a, and I've seen tapes of Goto, and he likes to take stuff and go tic-tac-toe on foreheads, and he's trying to do that with me, and I wasn't going to let him. And so, and you remember that, he just shot on him. He, yep. he defended himself with a chair, and then he just, you know, basically put him in a sleeper or whatever, but, mm-hmm. you know. Because he is, uh, well, he was the beast. Yeah. I mean, he's like a... The original beast. Pretty much, yeah. He's pretty much like a guy who knows martial arts in a bar fight. Yeah. That's what it looked like. You yeah. Know what I mean? But they'll probably talk to Sabu. Oh, yeah. Sabu. Um, if Magui Kudo is still around, if she's still alive, mm. they'll probably talk to her, too, because she did the first woman's exploding rematch right. with Combat Toyota. Well, you think they'll get Onita? <laughs> What, do you want to talk shit about his own company? Or try to defend it? He'll defend it, or even just say how some of the matches, he might even say... Not beyond his control? Yeah, or he might say, it's like, you know what, I was young then, and I don't know, we, we did go a little overboard with some What stuff. was his nickname? Mr. Liar. Hmm. And, and he also tried for Japanese Senate also. Right. But um, it's going to be an interesting upcoming... Dark Side of the Rings coming up because I really do want to see that FMW. I want to see the XPW. And Luna Vachon's going to be very interesting to watch. How would you like to be in the chambers of the Japanese diet where if Onita was elected in their parliament somehow and you had uh, Suzuki there? Suzuki, oh, can you imagine that? I mean, it would probably look, it would probably turn into an FMW card. He'll probably uh, he, When Onita ran, guess it was in parliament at the time. Uh, Inoki. Ah. Inoki was still there. He was still in Japanese Parliament. And from what I heard, Hayabusa actually uh, went in and won. Mm. So the, the next step in the Japanese professional wrestling business is you're going to be a politician. Right. Because uh, Omita was in their Japanese Senate for the longest time. Mm. Uh, what else you want to talk about, man? Um, By the way, fuck you, Vince. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I think I don't know. I think we covered a lot. I think we're pretty much caught up, you know. Yeah. Rest in peace to Daphne, Shannon, Shannon. Shannon. Yeah, I um, mean, so, all her family and friends and fans, you know, like we usually do with. Again, if you need help, there's suicide hotlines out there. There's all kinds of counselors out there. You're not alone. Right. You're not alone. All right. Um, I guess that's about it. Oh, folks, we'll talk to you next week. See ya.